Hi there, and welcome to the UNLV College of Fine Arts. I'm Dr. Ashley Stone, the student recruitment specialist for the college, and I also teach voice for the School of Music. I'm here to share with you a little bit today about our College of Fine Arts. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the College of Fine Arts, a creative nexus anchored within the vibrant and diverse culture of Las Vegas, boldly launches visionaries who transform the global community through collaboration, scholarship, and innovation. And we 100% stand by that statement. We absolutely deeply honor collaboration, scholarship, and innovation. And the global aspect is one that we hold particularly sacred for our students. Uh, one of the ways in which we do that is by offering to sponsor our students' first passport. We understand that college is an expensive financial investment and it's difficult for folks to necessarily plan for some of these spontaneous and amazing opportunities that do arise for our performing and visual arts students that you know may involve sharing their craft abroad and so to make sure that nothing gets in their way we want to make sure that they can get their hands on a passport and so the college of fine arts will sponsor your first passport if you join us and have such an opportunity I would also like to feature, um, speaking of visionaries who transformed the global community, <laughs> um, one of our graduates from 2015, a dance major named Cooper Rust, who started a ballet company out in Kenya, and through her hard work and amazing instruction, has taught so many amazing young artists out there who have gone on to major, major dance schools and actually to perform with incredibly renowned dance companies throughout the world. We're so deeply proud of the work that Cooper has done in her field. Alrighty, so there are seven Harry Potter houses, as I lovingly call them, because I'm a bit of a nerd. The first of our seven is our School of Architecture, where students focus on three major areas. We have our general studies in architecture that they can major in, um, and that when combined with the master's in architectural studies and the appropriate licensure examinations leads you to become a fully licensed architect for the industry. Next, we have our interior architecture and design students. They focus on um, the interior structure of the building rather than throw pillows and fancy fabric choices, though there's a little bit of that that gets tied in as well, which is fun. Um, but they do a lot of time engaging with research on how humans engage with the interior structures of spaces that they enter, as well as keeping ADA considerations in mind, because that is super important for our students to be deeply conscious of as they go out into the industry post-graduation. Last but not least, we have our landscape architects who do an incredibly important job in this day and age, which is sustainable landscape design. Um, and it's not just the basic landscaping that you see in your houses um, and in you know basic parks. Um, they do all kinds of sustainable uh, landscape work, uh, particularly things like uh, preserves and making those wonderful natural habitats that um, both enhance and sustain our environment and the creatures that live there um, and really kind of highlight the natural beauty of the space is something that we really spend a lot of time focusing on in our studies here because we are in such a unique and arid climate. Um, our students do have to spend a lot of time learning about which plants ideally can thrive in specific locations and work best for what purposes. Um, we have a lot of green space on campus, lovingly designed by such landscape architects, and through their careful design, we are able to maintain such spaces in our complex environment here. Alrighty, our students learn to work in a broad variety of mediums. Um, a lot of the traditional ones, but also we have some glycerin carvings here as part of their studies. As they start out, they work with these materials by hand, but once they've become comfortable with the materials and how to manipulate them, they do advance on to uh, more detailed and um, like computer generated manipulations such as laser cutters and other um, computerized methods of material manipulation. This image here is from our art walk from a couple of years ago. This is an interactive topographical map. This gentleman here is 
adjusting the sand and that is reflected on the screen. Art Walk is an annual event that happens here on campus, usually the first Friday in October. And it is an event where all seven of our schools and departments come out and share their craft with the community. It's a free event and there's snacks and drinks and everybody just gets to enjoy and celebrate the artistic endeavors that take place here on campus. Here we have a collaborative second year project. Everyone was assigned a different part of this cityscape via plexiglass and styrofoam. And this is another part of the second year experience. This is part of the demonstrate class. Focus on the monster in the middle of demonstrate. Um, they'll take a creature in which they study this semester. It was um, small insects with like little carapaces, little crunchy shells. Um, another year it was deep sea creatures and they'll follow and study that structure and transition that all the way into a, an architectural design later on. We have our third and fourth year architectural studies and interior architecture and design little studio spaces. Uh, our third and fourth year students get their own cubicle spaces to store and work on their designs. Um, landscape has its own uh, area. It's just in a different room than this long hallway type room here. And we have a CNC router, speaking of those advanced manipulation techniques for materials. And our students do have access to a fully functional wood shop. They do a lot of theoretical design work, but they do have hands-on design build opportunities as well. And we have our specific architectural studies library here on campus. It is both a precious resource for our students on campus, but is a beloved regional resource as well, containing up-to-date periodicals and tons of literature for research. It also houses our Clyde Jubilwald lecture series, which um, brings in renowned architects from all across the globe who share their insights with our students. That lecture series series is completely free um, and open to the public. So anyone who may have interest in learning more about architecture from the folks who live it can join us at any time for those series. Next, we have our Department of Art. We're starting out here in our Donna Beam Gallery of Art, which typically houses Master of Fine Arts exhibitions and Bachelor of Fine Arts student exhibitions. Um, our art majors study a broad variety of majors, including uh, painting, drawing, and printmaking, photography, graphic design, sculptural practices, and art history. Our painting, drawing, and print majors will study with renowned artists like Tim Babington, and I highly recommend, if you do not know much about Tim Babington, to uh, look up a little bit about how he engages with his craft. His approach to painting is particularly unique, um, and as a musician myself, I find his process particularly interesting, and if you look him up, you'll know why. Our photographers particularly focus on art photography, but do also have engagement in commercial photography. One of their secondary projects that they did a couple of semesters ago was helping the community emergency response team education um, training force um, build instructional posters uh, for the training options. And if you haven't done the CERT program, the community emergency response team, totally worth it. Good education. Next, we have our Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art. There are several galleries on campus, but the Donna Beam and the Marjorie Barrick are two of my favorite. Entry is totally free, and there's amazing art to be seen. This one largely houses major national traveling shows, um, so you'll get to see artists from all around the country um, get to be displayed here. And full disclosure, we do not usually have a harp. This is another art walk picture. This is Grant Hall, home to our painting, drawing, and printmaking studios. Some of them um, are uh, print labs, are having a moment. There's the singer part. Um, ceramic studio, that's what I was fishing for, and our graphic design um, studios as well. So the reason there's a quilt on it is we regularly have guest artists come in and work with our students and engage in major projects. And this guest artist um, had designed a large scale quilt, which had a lot of community engagement to make it happen to go on Grant Hall, which made it look lovely for about two weeks. It's fun and colorful. This here is our graphic design capstone project, which is a great opportunity for our students to share their craft and share a little bit about what it is they're specifically passionate about with both our faculty and guest artists who evaluate. These students create a brand from the ground up um, and create all the branding, of course, that goes with it. And 
designs or corporate designs such as an airplane that caters specifically to pet parents is one that stuck with me. Um, so folks who say have large dogs like Great Danes that would have to go in the undercarriage would have special um, notification systems and special care packages for the comfort of their large dog um, and themselves while they're on the flight. And they went so far as to design, design all of those care packages and how the notification system might interact with your phone. Um, so really a lovely opportunity to learn more about what our students are passionate about and um, really see some of their stellar, stellar work and get to share that with artists in our community. And this I always include because it's an amazing lesson important to keep in mind for all aspects of our artists. Make good art, make fantastic mistakes. Mistakes are always an amazing source of new knowledge. Moving on to our department of dance. Our dance majors have two focuses, performance and choreography and production and management. Know that our production and management folks do still have plenty of opportunity to dance as well. So that's definitely not mutually exclusive. Our dancers study three major areas, ballet, modern, and jazz, but have the opportunity to expand their experience with additional coursework um, with our faculty members and guest artists that come in to work with them. Our dancers typically do two performances each semester. One is a faculty choreographed show. The other is a completely student run production. The faculty choreographed show takes place in our Judy Bailey Theater, which is where you see our dancers dancing here. That is a 550 seater. And you'll hear that uh, theater name come up quite a few times because a lot of our areas access that space. And the student run productions happen in Studio One, which is both an amazing rehearsal space, um, but it also transforms into a fully immersive performance hall with amazing lighting setup and um, sound rigging. It's lovely. Beautiful student work. Also fun, our students uh, study video filming and editing. So over the course of the pandemic, they have not even remotely been slowed. Um, they've done several virtual concerts. So if you are a dancer, you can go to our YouTube page for the College of Fine Arts at UNLV and check out several of their virtual dance concerts, filmed and edited by the students themselves. We also offer a Pilates minor for folks who might be interested. This image is particularly special to me. Um, this is part of our Korea National Sports University exchange program um, that it's it's a very short exchange program, but um, so for over a decade, we've been doing this exchange with KNSU and two years ago, because those numbers are the easiest to uh, pull up because it's grown each year. So more students will go each year. Uh, 20 of our students and 20 of their students came together and performed a concert together called Together or Hamke in Korean. And they performed it both here in the Judy Bailey Theater and in Seoul, South Korea, uh, which means that those 20 of our students who had a buddy from KNSU got to travel to Seoul and um, stay there and explore South Korean culture and cuisine and got to take classes in their school. And it was super fun. Um, I believe it was about two weeks that the students were there. Um, and it was just this wonderful, immersive experience. There were a couple of students that also got to stay a little longer. Um, but regardless of whether you're a dance major or not, if you have the opportunity to see the Together concert, um, it is 100% worth it. It's so stunning. And you get the opportunity to see Korean modern and Korean traditional dance, which we don't get to see here quite as often. It's really an amazing, amazing time. Next, we have our joint program with the College of Engineering, our Entertainment Engineering and Design major. These students study an incredibly broad range of subjects that are applicable to a broad range of career choices later on. Think of it as theater tech with a heavy emphasis on um, back-end computer programming. Um, immersive experience design. So our graduates have gone on to make America Ninja Warrior sets, design escape rooms, work on the Las Vegas Strip with Cirque du Soleil. Um, we had one um, that was involved in one of the Michael Jackson shows one. There was an entire number that people were wearing like LED suits. And he was the one that programmed the LED suits in time with the music. Um, did I mention the Imagineer? That was a special circumstance because she had also additional background knowledge um, that kind of helped contribute to that transition, but definitely in the realm of possibility. Um, but these students study a 
obviously a broad range of technical and theatrical and artistic studies. This is from a tour of an architect not architectural, pyrotechnical uh, facility. This program has tons of industry connections with shows throughout shows and um, like supports industry throughout the city itself. So sound and lighting design, because not only do the theater productions here require that kind of support, but a lot of the commercial like conventions also have that same level of theatrical immersive support. So there's a lot of that going on too. Our students also engage in fun projects like creating small animatronics. Their first stage of this project is making an eyeball dance to music, but it continues on to having these paper puppets go on and act out little scenes. This is their workshop where they create so many of their interesting projects. And again, such a broad spectrum of creations. One of our grads um, ultimately designed a robot that inspected um, welding on roller coasters. And several companies actually came out to check that out and consider making a bid on it because of the incredible possibilities that that could yield in proving safety. And a nice little LED project to round things out. Moving on to our Department of Film. Film has one major. It's film. However, that does not mean that it is not diverse in how it can be explored. All of our majors do start out studying the same things, and it is every aspect of film. Uh, screenwriting, cinematography, editing, acting, all of those aspects so that when our graduates go out into the industry and have to communicate with folks that specialize in each of those areas, they're really comfortable communicating with those experts. Um, but as they find the area that they really love and really want to refine as part of their career path, they get the opportunity to take more specialized classes in that area and mentor themselves to one of our faculty members that is a specialist in that area. Now, film has many opportunities for film festivals and uh, travel, such as Sundance, and we've had some students go to Cannes. Um, but we also have a fun opportunity, which you see here, which is the Coca-Cola Regal Cinemas competition. We're able to participate in that because one of our faculty members, Brett Levner, won the competition several years ago. And so thanks to her, that doorway is open for us. What you're seeing here are images from a shoot that was from two of our sophomore women who submitted a finalist uh, script that was accepted to the competition and they were given a sizable chunk of change to create a crew of 60 students and able to make this 30 second short that played in Regal Cinemas. I believe it was January and February of this past year. If you're interested in checking out the short, it's called Rebels Big Wish. This is an image from our film Welcome Day where everybody gets together, all the students and all the faculty and everybody gets to meet all of the faculty so that when you start your classes in the fall, everything's just a bit more familiar and comfortable as you move into your coursework. We also have a strong alumni base out in LA. So this is from our annual alumni mixer. We always like to keep in touch with our alumni. And also a fun treasure for our film department, we house the Howard Hughes Film Collection, which the chair of that department, Dr. Heather Addison, is currently working on cataloging. Alrighty, next we have our School of Music. Our School of Music has many opportunities available. We have, it's best to break it down in the broad spectrum categories, classical performance, music education, um, jazz and commercial music, jazz and commercial music, composition, and classical composition. Now, all of these can be applied to a broad spectrum of instruments, so know that there's a lot of adaptability there, depending on your instrument of choice. We also have a broad range of ensembles available for participation by both majors and non-majors. So if you are a music major, then all doorways are open. If you are a non-music major but still want to play, there are still many, many ways that you can continue to engage in the art that you love so much. And I do have to say, we have an absolutely incredible jazz program. They have been invited back to the Monterey Jazz Festival for over a decade, year after year after year. And that is a blind audition. They are incredibly strong, both musicians and academics. And the work they do is absolutely outstanding. Um, I just, incredible admiration as a classical musician towards those jazzers. These students are doing such incredible work. Uh, tons of Downbeat Magazine Awards and Next Generation Music Festival acknowledgement. Um, Gentleman in the Middle is one of our recent graduations, uh, graduates from undergrad, now going into our master's program, Paul Hogan. Um, 
keep an eye out for that name. He is going places. We do have lots of opportunities for collaboration uh, for our classical artists as well. We have a very strong relationship with the Las Vegas Philharmonic. Many of our faculty members actually play with that ensemble as well. Many of our faculty, actually the majority, are still very, very active in their industry on top of teaching. This is from the Bronze Requiem collaboration between our choirs and the Las Vegas Phil and the Smith Center. We have here our chamber choir in front of the Donna Beam Music Center. And we have our wind ensemble in Ham Hall. This is our largest theater, obviously best used for giant ensembles. And we have our opera in the Judy Bailey Theater. This was from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Last but not least, we have our Department of Theater. Theater has three major focuses, theater technology and design, theater general studies, and stage and screen acting. All start out with the same basic theater education to make sure their foundation courses are good and that their studies are nice and solid before they launch into their specialized areas. Stage and screen acting is the only auditioned area for the theater department. Now, you don't necessarily have to be a stage and screen acting major to participate in the many productions that they do. And by many, I do mean many. They engage in usually six um, per year. That's usually five straight plays and one musical. In the years in which they happen to do two musicals, it is three straight plays and two musicals, just because musicals are quite the undertaking. They perform in two major spaces on campus, the Judy Bailey Theater and the Black Box Theater, which you see here. I liked the set because it has a water feature. Alrighty, this is a rehearsal in one of our classroom spaces for Legally Blonde. This is the Black Box set up for The Flick, designed to look like a theater. This is an image from Marcus and the Secret of Sweet. And this is again from our Art Walk. This is a monologue outdoors for a general audience. And this is again in our Judy Bailey Theater. This is from Bombadil, A Comedy of Errors. Alrighty. And the next stop is the tour, which you can see at a different time. But thank you for joining me today. And I will catch you next time. Thank you so much again for hanging out with us. And if you have any questions about fine arts, please feel free to email me at ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y dot S-T-O-N-E, that's stone at unlv.edu, ashley.stone at unlv.edu. Thank you. <laughs>